So your favorite Italian again? Good morning. <laughs> um, we are going to have a special uh, presentation today. It's more of a boxing match between Red Hat and Sousa than a, than a presentation. Well, I'm very, I'm very happy to have Herman and, uh, and, um, and uh, Roberto here with us. They, it's, a, it's a beautiful uh, example of community work. Red Hat and Sousa are competitors. They work, they go on same clients, on same, uh, behind same technologies and all these things, but still they're working together to improve our open source community and that's extremely, and uh, if that's not an example of community work, I don't know what it is. So please give it up for Herman and uh, Roberto. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So hello everyone. And Welcome to another GitOps session in the Kubernetes Community Days Amsterdam 2023. I'm Roberto Caradala and I'm EMEA Cloud Services Black Belt, working for Red Hat. And this is Herman Montalvo Yevenes, I'm a technical marketing manager at Sutsa. So today we will explain the different patterns for the different GitOps deployments and to manage cloud native applications. So imagine that you are working in a platform engineer or a DevOps team that needs to manage hundreds of different microservices. And you recently adopt the different GitOps methodology. But you wanted to know also how to implement these different patterns that you have. So we will describe the different patterns that you can use daily basis as well. And we can introduce the uh, different GitOps tools and projects to managing the different uh, environments and also to managing the GitOps uh, deployments and applications. So let's start with the GitOps tools and projects. So um, in terms of the tools and projects, uh, we're going to review first uh, some of the um, some of the projects that, uh, that we're going to see. Um, can you go up there, please? <laughs> okay, so the first thing, so we are not going to invest so much time in this because uh, we are assuming that we are all familiar with the GitOps um, with a GitOps uh, paradigm. So some of the principles, the system is described um, declaratively. It's, uh, it's a new good paradigm that we are going to see for deploying the applications, as even deploying or changing the infrastructure. The decided state is versioned on Git. The different states, the current states is what we get from the clusters, and the decided state is what we want to get. Uh, all the appropriate changes can be applied automatically. There's two models, two major models. There are pull and push models, and both of them will be uh, applied directly as long as we have the changes in, in, the, um, in the Git repository. And also a controller exists in case of any drift is detected between the, um, uh, the current state and the desired state, what is declared into the repository, and what is, the, what is reported from the cluster itself. So the, one of the major tools that we are going to use is the Argo CD. We are all familiar with Argo CD, I hope so. It is a cluster and application configuration version it in, uh, in Git. It automatically syncs configuration from Git to the clusters. In case of any drift detections, um, you can visualize and correct it depending on how you configure that. Um, it uh, provides granular control over sync order for complex rollouts. It can roll back and roll forward for to any Git coming, so, so the Git will be, um, will be a milestone, a point on time about uh, what our infrastructure was at certain point of time. And uh, the manifest templating support, which is gonna be the major point of this talk. This is gonna be a lot, uh, talking about the templating. So um, this is focuses on the customized, but we'll be covering also Helm. It can also provide some visual insights um, about the, the situation we have into the infrastructure. Uh, so one of the, when it comes to manage uh, a large number of uh, devices of infrastructure, one of the major tools that is really useful is uh, Fleet. Fleet is an open source GitHub solution designed specifically to manage large number of devices or infrastructure. This is really good because in terms of the edge architecture, for example, where infrastructure need to be increased or, or adding or removing with the flexibility in terms of uh, having a manufacturer or whatever, it is really good because a fleet can group in different, different uh, devices and the configurations can be leveraged, just applying a certain numbers or for a specific um, environments or devices. 
So, let's start with the, uh, some fun uh, with GitHub patterns with Argo CD. You have also this QR and also this URL, and if you just scan it, you can go to one open source um, repo and you can reproduce every single demo that you have in here. So um, we like risks, and for that reason, we are doing live demos with a hotspot, so um, yeah, it will be uh, fun. And we have also our Argo CD um, instance in here, and in this um, different QR, we have different demos, so we can start defining the different demos that we, we have. The first demo that we want, and uh, the first pattern, is that the Argo CD applications, projects, and the different settings can be defined yes, uh, with an, as an order Kubernetes object. So you have here an Argo CD application that is just another Kubernetes manifest. And you can apply this application defining the different source, and you can define the different repositories, paths, or also environments and the destination that could be the exact same cluster or could be other remotes that we will see in another pattern as well. And the most important part is the sync policy that defines, for example, when Argo CD detects the dr uh, drifts between the desired state of the manifest and also the live state of the cluster will define if there is syncing manually or automatically given the, these drifts. So the pattern zero is yet another Kubernetes object, and you can define the Argo CD applications. So let's jump into the first pattern, customize to the rescue. Customize traverse a Kubernetes manifest, adding or changing the configuration as needed. This is gonna be the core of the course, uh, as long with the Argo CD. Some of the principles we have for, with the customize, the customize is consist in a base file, some of the base files with the customization.yaml file itself, which is declaring what, what is gonna be the files that will be changed or some of, the, some of the specifications that we're going to add. Depending on which environments we want to create based, based on the base, um, we, are, we, we will be able to create some overlays. In this case, for this example, we have two, the development one and the production one. Each of them has different CPU counts, replica counts, and uh, other customization that we want to add. The major point of that is we don't want to duplicate the files depending on the environments because this is okay for one application. Let's try to imagine this with thousands and thousands of applications. It's almost impossible. So um, this is really good for templating things because if you are uh, templating with customize, you don't need, you remove that need of duplicating things. So let's jump to see that into the demo. So we go to the repository, the first one, the first pattern, and just uh, copy and paste the, the files that we have prepared for you. If we go to the dashboard, we'll be able to see the application is um, it's, uh, deployed, and we can see the different objects available. If you go to the details, you can see the repo URL, so it's pointing to the Git repository where you have all the uh, the customization files, and with a specific path. If you go there, you will be able to see the customization file itself, which is pointing, if you go into the customization, thank you, buddy, it's uh, now targeting using some of the resources available and the patch strategy that we want to change. In this case, for example, we want to target in this specific deployment. This deployment we have here with the name of VGDK will be changing these values here. So we want to change the first item into the first array, and we want to change that value to yellow. Customize will read that and will apply the changes to the application deployed in, in Argo CD. So if you go back here and see the application's details, go down into the manifest, uh, I hope the, everyone can see that. You see the first item in the value, it's the, the name of color, thank you, and the value of yellow. So in this way, you can change that. So imagine this as development environment, you can push that to production and you can change that to the desired value that you want to. All right then, first demo live. So what if you wanted to control the ordering of the different GitOps? Because GitOps, it's syncing every single Kubernetes manifest. But what if you need to first deploy your database? 
insert some data uh, into the database and therefore deploy your front end. How you can control the order within the GitOps deployment. Introducing sync waves and hooks. A sync wave is a way to order how the Argus CD applies to the different manifests stored in Git. And all of the manifests, all of the Kubernetes manifests have this annotation with this sync wave and also one number that defines the grouping of the different applications. So you can group and you can define first is the database and then you can apply different things like the front end implying also and defining all the things. And a very handy also um, tool is hooks that could be uh, and uh, can run before, during, and after a sync operation. So in this specific demo, we will insert some information usually in the API when everything is ready. But you can send messages in Slack, send um, if everything, for example, works well, you can send one Slack message. If everything was uh, wrong, you can send a page of duty, for example. You can control the different stages or not. So in this demo, we will control the order and we will first deploy the database. We insert data, we will deploy the front end, and we'll make an HTTP call just with a single um, kubectl, hopefully. Let's see. So if we go to the second pattern, in this second pattern, we have the TT application, we copy paste it, we go to the pattern, to the pattern, and we deploy it, just we go to this, we show it because it's pretty quickly. And as you can see, this is not a big bang. It's having order. It's first deploying the application of the postgres and applying also different things like um, the front end as well. And it's doing everything with the different order. So it's not applying every single object that detects. It's maintaining the proper order, defining, for example, this. How you can control it? Remember that we apply sync waves, and we have a sync wave with zero that it's applying the first time, and afterwards, when it's ready, when it's deployed and sync it properly, we have also the sync wave two, defining different things that we can control, and controlling the order within the different GitOps deployments, so you can have the power of controlling and orchestrating your different Kubernetes manifests. So what a good way to orchestrate things, right? So let's gonna see the third pattern here, the GitOps orders awaken. We already see what happened when we have to define a single application. We, was, we go to the Argo CD, we define what we want to the Git repository, but what happens when we need to scale that, this up to 1,000 different related applications? We cannot have a single definition for each of them because managing that or sending that to the operations teams will make them mad. It's possible um, it's going to reduce or increase the retention policy of the employees. So the question uh, here actually rise, what about deploying multiple related applications at once? So, we don't want to end the day at like this guy with just handling the different files or so just trying to, um, okay, where, where I would put the configuration for that Argo CD file. This is intended for a specific cluster, this is for another one. This is almost impossible. No one wants to deal, to deal with that. If you have been in the industry for more time, you will probably know how that feels. So, um, the, then the Argo CD app of apps pattern is going to rise to be the solution here. It allows us to define a root Argo CD application that will itself define others Argo CD application belonging to the same one. The root apps, uh, the Argo CD root application points to a folder in Git IT where you have other files, where you have other files where you are defining the Argo CD plans or uh, the components that belongs to each application. That doesn't mean you don't need to define the rest of the application, but Argo CD, when it comes to deploy, you deploy the root application and it will be orchestrating the rest of the components. So we're going to see that into a demo again. So if we go to the repository, go and point into the demo, pattern three, just uh, as before, we're applying the, uh, 
uh, the deploy to the Argo CD. There we are. Pattern three, and we just apply what we get from the repository. We go back to the dashboard and we filter in with, uh, just to remove the rest of the application that does not belong to this uh, app. So as you can see here, we have a bunch of different Argo CD application, but we just, we just deployed the root Argo CD application. It's the one that you see into the top left corner. So if we go to the root application, we can see that is the root application, the root Argo CD application. And the application you see on the right, the Argo CD application you see on the right belongs to the same root one. So if you see on the details, you can see the path, and the path is pointing to the different components. If you go there, it is pointing to the, to the repository where you can see the rest of the definitions, the YAML definition of the rest of the application belonging to the same one. But you don't deploy these apps. You deploy the root Argo CD applications. So you back there and you see some of the details that you can see on the application. Um, let's trust on the Wi-Fi. Thanks, God. So you can see here the Argo, the Argo CD application. This is one of the child applications belonging to the same, the, the same root or parent application. As you can see, it's an application as always, um, where you can see some uh, of the repo URLs, so you can see the details, and uh, everything is uh, working as expected. But you just deployed the root, the Argo CD application. That is uh, the app of apps. All right, then. So I have a question. Do I need to define each Argo City application in this pattern? Is there any way better to manage our application at scale? Because we saw just a bunch of applications, but what if you need to manage hundreds of different microservices and you need to deploy it and you need to also orchestrate, for example, development, staging, or production uh, applications? So we introduce Argo CD application sets. With these application sets that is in specific for Argo CD, you can target multiple Kubernetes clusters. And also you can, with a single manifest, uh, Kubernetes manifest that we saw, you can deploy multiple applications from one to multiple Git repositories, improving this support of the monorepo. So we can have just one repo, one Git repo, and within, you can define, for example, one folder structuring your different development, staging, and production um, objects and Kubernetes manifest as well. And within this multi-tenant clustering, you can improve the ability of individual cluster tenants to deploy different applications controlling your different environments that you wanted to target as well. Using that, we are using the generators, so we have four type of generators, and we will focus in this demo in two. That is the Git generator that will point to one specific uh, um, Git repository with this folder, and also you can use other generators in this demo. So we will demonstrate managing this GitHub application at scale. We prepared the fourth demo, and so far so good, trusting the hotspot and living in the edge. And we will deploy dev staging and production environment with a single Argo CD application set. So if we go again to the applications, we remove the filter, we saw a lot of different things, and we just go to the pattern four. In this pattern four, we will apply these Argo CD application sets. And with this application set, we see that if we filter with different projects that we have, we have the different staging projects. So these staging projects are the different Argo CD application sets that we define it. These application sets are pointing out to one specific generator, and we use the key generator. So you can define the different directories, and you can put whatever you want inside that will recognize automatically defining inside of this. If you put, for example, more applications will pop up here and will appear without the need of defining every single object, every single Kubernetes manifest, just popping up right now. And if we add, for example, another folder, we'll sync and we'll have. So we are structuring 
we are defining everything that is here. So we have this also for Pratt and everything is right. So, so far so good. And we have another type of generation. We focus just in one cluster, but what if you want to deploy it in multiple cluster? Argo CD can also define with using the cluster generator that automatically generates these cluster parameters. If you have your credentials, you can target with one single um, Argo CD instance, multiple different Kubernetes cluster, and you can have, for example, inside of your Argo CD, different Kubernetes clusters managed that could be within or distributed across different environments. And therefore, you can have also this generator with these clusters. And you can use this in order to deploy your different environments, your different development um, environments, staging that are you uh, defining in one single repo, and using these generators pointing and deploying with one click your entire infrastructure, your entire environment across all of these um, Kubernetes clusters. So you have a lot of power for using that generator as well. And the last button we're going to cover today, not to mess up with the time, it's the promotion between the GitOps environment. So this is what we want to get. We want to have the source code, we want to build into the QA, then promote between different environments. So um, how do we use that so far? We have different branches, different uh, branches pointing to uh, different uh, environments, the production environment, the staging, and the QA. And when we want to move some changes, we just promoting the, the, the changes, just uh, merging one branch to another or using any Git strategy base. This is not what we want to do during this, uh, this demo. So we need to move out because it will require to have multiple branches, multiple files, and it's going to be uh, um, complex to handle when it comes to edge architectures. So if you see at the, at the um, files hierarchy, we have the patencies, we have a bunch of different base files, and then we have the ends and the variants. And we have some specific extra settings that we are adding for uh, each of the environments. If we go to the customize, we are going to see the base files, some of the resources are only pointing to the base files with the different components, which is going to the variants, in this case for the Europe, and um, the patches strategic merge that we are going to use for both files, deployments and the version, because these two are relevant to promoting the content from one to another. So, um, please, thank you. Then we have these uh, different steps. This is a very uh, graphical, visual way to, to visualize what, what happened when we try to move that from one. So into the first step, we have the EU variant. This is the one with, that we want to move between the different environments. And we are applying, um, we are applying the, different, uh, the different extra settings that we are going to add, depending of the, of the stage we have. So two different scenarios. How are we going to promote application version from dev to a staging environment in the US. So we are not going to move that um, from the variants. Just copying the files into the repository. We are copying the files, the files version.yaml from the dev GPU into the staging US. In the second scenario, we are going to do the same, but from the stage to the production. So we are going to uh, move out. And if we see the dev GPU version on the um, uh, on the dev side, we are going to that we are using or we are testing the DAC image dot 2.0. Once we have copied that, we have see, we can see the uh, the version on the production is still the one because the changes that we are validated into the previous environment will be pushed into the next one, into the next environment, to the it will be promoted into the into the other environment. So everything that is validated in the previous environment will be pushed to the production or to other environments. So you don't lose the control even if you are, um, if you are using this scenario. So time for the Q&A. So far, so good. Any questions so far? Yeah, sir. Perfect. Much better, yeah. Yeah, much appreciated. So, if you have a new version of your application, for instance, and okay. you would deploy it and then find out that stuff is breaking, uh, would it 
just be uh, uh, reverting the version to a lower version and then deploy that up to staging and then to production, for example? This is a way to go, yeah. You have also the rollback. So you can roll back to any specific commit because within every single Argos CD application, you have also the history and rollback. And it's defined in Git. That's the proper way to go. And if you are messing up with different branches, for that reason, we want to avoid it because we suffered uh, that in the past. And for that specifically, we wanted to just go in with a better way in order to ju just copy one single file pointing out. And you can just go and roll back going to one specific commit, avoiding pain, in, more in production and uh, these calls into uh, AM in the morning. So SREs, yeah. Yes. Hi. How do you manage the controls of, uh, around deploying to production? So it's obviously a code review. Okay. How do you how do you do that? How do you make sure that nothing gets deployed that should not be deployed? That's a very interesting question because you need to, for example, uh, define the promotions, and you can also use this P request in order to at least pull requests. So we did just copy in it but you can also demonstrate it and you can put pull request and several reviewers in order to not mess up with different things. So is it just a demo? Don't do it in, uh, in production. So just put a pull request, some reviewers, some linting, and you are good to all. And you have also the rollback, so you can always roll it back to one specific version that you know that controls and you know that works. Just remember that rolling back, it's uh, also a feature available in Argo CD. So if you want to roll back, a commit is just a point on time for my application. So if you want to roll back, you can always go back on the commit, on the GIT, or you can use it or fix in something into the Argo CD just to make sure that you have the right, the right version of the application running into the previous stage. All right, then. All right. We have questions. Hi. Hello. So the pattern three, it explained about the apps of apps. Okay. So let's say that you're allowed a new version of your app and you have tested that in QA environment and dev it works, but for some reason when you ship to production, you have a bug. So is there a way that I can detect that before going to prod and not doing rollback, but just testing it before just switching the traffic or just? Yeah, there is um, a bunch of uh, different uh, products that you can implement as well. And you can use, for example, Argus the image updater in order to link everything, prepare, deploy it in one uh, scenario, and you can use also application sets. This is the next generation of Apple apps. And you can define, for example, first the development and staging, targeting for one specific uh, area and scenario. And therefore, you can then that you can uh, be and have this insurance promoted to uh, GitOps using pull requests or whatever that you are implementing. So it's focusing first in these scenarios in development and in staging in one uh, cluster, for example, and then applying this in production that you know and you have the insurance that works. Thank you. My pleasure. Hi, I'm here. Uh, I have a question. Hello. Um, so usually in, in an environment, we try to create artifacts through pipelines. Okay. Uh, the artifacts are usually stored in a repository. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm curious, how do you make the connection between a new artifact and your automated deployment? So if you have version one and you create a new artifact version two, okay. how do you want this process to be automated all the way into your GitOps repository without automating the auto commit? Yeah, it's who controls the automation, isn't it? Yeah, it's a chicken and egg. So it's not easy. We try to simplify that and we try to do it at least not doing the big bang. So if you see here, and it's messing with me, the Wi-Fi, okay, uh, the different uh, dev environments, you can define as well the different directories that you can. For, but you can narrow as well. You can deploy just a single specific application and test it. And therefore, you can increase this automation. It's not a big bang. It's just trying to make the things that works first, keep it a bit simple first, and then you can um, automate a little bit more. It is like, uh, patterns that we saw, uh, we suffered. So if we are uh, starting, this application set can save you a lot of time, but you need to take care with the automation as well. All right then. This one, because we don't want to eat. I mean, 
We are in time. We're from Spain. Yeah, so far, so far. <coughs> Let's see how many questions we have. <laughs> I have a question about the same application set. This one is top down. The top down repository uh, de describes what children you have. Can you also have it in a decoupled way that a child says, I want to belong to this parent, and the other way around? Yeah, and that's exactly that you can do with these matrix generators. You have different generators that you can deploy. So you have list generators that you can apply that specific pattern, and you can define this specific um, application that you want instead of doing this big bang, narrowing and doing that. That's the best thing around generators, that you have this flexibility in order to scale. And you have, for example, this cluster generator. And you can apply both. So you have this mix and match using the matrix generator that combines the different generators. So you can target, for example, development and the staging for one specific uh, cluster and use also this a uh, git generator in order to deploy just single app or a multiple apps. The generators will actually allow uh, most, uh, most of the um, definitions to be flexible because independent of how you want to deploy your application or what is the uh, strategy that you want to apply to the environment, you will be able to see how many generators that you need to use. Maybe you have just a single repository, maybe you have more than one cluster that you want to add, and maybe that's not applicable for, for most of the clusters. So you can add that, that kind of flexibility, specifically for Edge. All right, then. Um, yeah, one more. One more. Yeah. Uh, how do you uh, handle secrets? Because uh, there are problems around secrets storing in the GitOps world, huh? and there are ways uh, you encrypt and decrypt uh, secrets. With still secrets. How yeah. do you handle in production? Ha with carefully. <laughs> carefully. I mean, uh, I mean uh, yeah, carefully. I suffer. It's in the usually, past. Uh, usually, you say that there is some uh, vault solution that is intended specifically to use that, for example, the sealed secrets or. or you you can use sealed secrets too. and you can define it also inside with Lua and uh, try to sync because this is like changing. And you need to be um, and tell Argo City that you are using these sealed secrets that you can define in Lua as well. So there are some bunch of different strategies, but this could be like another talk and could be fun. Probably. So, uh, so far, so good. Uh, thanks for listening. And uh, yeah, live demos. So we are living in the ads. Thanks for attending. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, guys. Beautiful, uh, beautiful presentation and example of collaboration. I loved it. I loved Thank it. You. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, people, yes, please go on and uh, have a stretch. We are going to restart at 11:45 sharp with Service Mesh and Raymond from Cilium.